Hey everyone and welcome back to your Fred Expert YouTube channel. I got asked to do more videos on how to achieve stunning looking real time models in Fred, and one essential part is obviously baking light and shadows into your OpenGL model. If you are interested into this topic, don't forget to check out my other videos linked in the description. In this video I'd like to talk about improving the visual quality for your interiors using a shadow baking instead of a simple ambient occlusion bake. In most of the cases I see people baking ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is a self-shadowing of objects and allows the possibility to change the environment or tweak values afterwards as the lighting is coming from the HDR dome and is not baked into the model. This is totally fine and sufficient for car exteriors, but it can look quite boring for interiors. So why not building a symmetric light setup, which is similar to a studio light setup, and bake just the shadows, as this gives more contrast at the outer areas, for the A-pillars on the dashboard for example, and softer AO-like shadows towards the center. Of course this is a pure fake and the shadows do not fit to your environment, but the same applies to AO shadow, and trust me, no one will realize that. So let me show you the different possibilities we have in the Baked Light and Shadow module in Fred. So to compare the Baked Ambient Occlusion with the uh, Baked Shadows, um, we calculate first of all on our GPU and Ambient Occlusion. With, uh, for now with highest quality, um, we stick to the Cosine weighting and what we do now is we save our textures as an external reference. So therefore I create on my desktop a new folder where all my AO shadows go into. And then we use no indirections and we don't use the denoiser. I'd like to show you the results um, without denoising. And we use a higher texel density of 1000, which means uh, the one pixel per millimeter. And I want to crop that at 2048 pixels maximum. So let's start and see what we get. Okay, now that this is done, let's have a look at our baking results. Before, let me quickly change my camera, maybe to something brighter so we can see the interior better. It's a little bit hard to see it with black leather. So um, we can go into the ambient occlusion rendering mode. So, and this is basically the result we get with these settings. Of course, you can also use um, more samples um, on the texture size, I would not go higher than 1000 um, pixel per meter. So that's quite good. And what you can see is that we don't have um, the artifacts we usually get when not dividing, subdividing our meshes here. And we get a nice, clean ambient occlusion shadow. So let's do something different now. So in my example, I prepared um, some lights in here as well. Let's turn them all on. and jump back into the realistic rendering so you can see what's going on. So I have basically some area lights set up here. Um, rectangular lights coming from all directions going through the window. And um, they all have the same intensity. So um, in my case, uh, intensity of 10 worked quite good. And they are illuminating the scene inside or the interior inside. But what we want to bake actually is not the light and on only the shadow of uh, these lights. So we go back to our shadow bake. Ah, yeah, no, quick tip. So if you turn on your ray tracer, I turn on the GPU ray tracer. and go to visualis visualization, render pass, rendering, illumination channel, and then have a look at the diffuse light illumination. You can roughly see where this is going with the shadows. So currently um, all the high glossy materials or the glass materials or the reflective plastic materials are not evaluated in that render mode, um, but it gives you an idea where your shadows is, is going. 
So um, let's turn that off again and go into our realistic rendering. So as you can see, the exterior is still activated. So I'm not so sure if this light um, causes any shadow because of the side mirror here. So just to be sure, I disable it. So now my interior is um, illuminated from all sides with the same intensity. And in our bake light and shadow module, what we do now is we turn on shadows. Quality wise, we stick to this exactly the same settings, but we will create a new folder next to our AO shadows and call that shadows. So we start building up kind of shadow variants with that and the textures are not inline in the file. They lay around there at the, at the folder. And then we select our interior and basically start the calculation again. All right, so now that our bake Baking is finished. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, disabling the area lights again and have a look at our ambient occlusion rendering channel. And let's simply compare that. So we can see we got some harder shadows here in that area from the door handle on the dashboard. And there's an option here that that allows you to repath the light maps. So what we're going to do is we select our interior node and then we can say repuff light map and we repuff them from what we currently see which is our shadow baking to the AO folder this um, takes a few seconds whenever you change it so once again Maybe let's have a look here. So once again, repuffing it back to our AO shadow. Ah, oh, this is AO, back to our um, shadows. And you can see you have um, much more contrast in these areas, right? So it's overall, it got brighter, obviously. Um, but you have more contrast in the dark areas like here on the floor to um, the brighter areas. So again, this is looking similar to an ambient occlusion, but gives you um, more contrast and sometimes um, geometry causes uh, more details in the shadows like here in that area. We see a kind of shadow. Yeah. It is also possible to trigger what I showed you, the repuffing in the variant sets. If you are a Fred Pro user, you can create a new set and then um, type in your script here as well. Um, I will paste that in the description. So that's it from my side. I hope you found the information helpful. Let me know what else you would like to see on this channel in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more information on Autodesk V-RED. Cheers.